I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Land spell check here for Arrow in the Head's The Fucking Black Sheep, where we take a look at the opposing opinion of the genre's most divisive films. In 2016, we got the release of the first true interpretation of Marvel's Merc with a Mouth with Fox's Deadpool. Ah, Orsions, a hard R fourth wall breaking action comedy. This was the first time an R rated superhero film made that sweet and expected Marvel superhero money. Deadpool wasn't the first R-rated comic book film, no, of course not. But Deadpool opened the floodgates and changed the game. Logan, the Shawshank of comic book movies, was able to get made in its intended form because of Deadpool's success. And now we get the release of its sequel, Deadpool 2. And here's to hoping it can live up to the hype and high bar set by the original. In keeping with the superhero theme, I'd like to take a look this month at an underloved and forgotten hard R comic book film with Marvel's Punisher Warzone. My love and knowledge of the Punisher is purely based on his film appearances in the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. To get some basic knowledge of the comics, I had to ask my friend and local Punisher enthusiast Zach just to get me up to date. The first time he hit the big screen was in 1989 with Dolph Lundgren a straight-to-VHS film in the States. This wasn't a very accurate interpretation. The skull was nowhere to be seen, but it's a fitting film for its time, a holdover from the Stallone and Schwarzenegger films. Castle is a big gun-wielding, motorcycle-riding badass. Years before Iron Man changed the course of history, Marvel is still trying to figure out its method and rebooted its most gritty and down-to-earth character with 2004's The Punisher. Man, I have tried many times to get into this film and I can't. A slow origin story where the violence is toned down, Castle uses stealth tactics and stupid tricks like a fucking fire hydrant, and then there's a whole subplot with his comedic neighbors? What am I watching? Thomas Jane has been a badass before, but not here. Travolta has been an amazing villain before, but I'm a man. Not here. I was convinced that Thomas Jane wasn't right for the character until I saw the short film Dirty Laundry. And let me tell you, I was wrong. Avoiding the pitfalls of another origin story and the tameness of the 04 version, director Lexi Alexander gave us the over the top gore fest that is Warzone. We start the story at the dinner meeting of a mob family whose fate has already been sealed. They're all dead. I just don't know it yet. This dinner party entrance is by far the best intro to the Punisher that I have seen. Way to hit the ground running, Lexi. Our new Frank Castle is played by Rome's Ray Stevenson. Now, if, if you haven't seen the masterpiece that is HBO's Rome, do yourself a favor. You won't regret it. Ray's version is the bulkiest to date, though not as muscular as Dolph. He definitely has the look of a guy that can kill you with his bare hands. With his slick back hair and grizzled face, he's the best looking of the bunch. Bernthal's a close second. Not only is his stature intimidating, but he's the only one in film that is properly geared up with head to toe body armor. This is the most believable costume for a man who's constantly involved in gunfights. And yes, I even love the neck guard. And then there's the gore. This was its best feature and something that was well needed for this dark and violent character. Decapitations, neck snaps, legs are blown off, neck stabbings, and the classic and reliable shootouts. In one of my favorite kills, Castle tosses a parkour henchman off a building onto a fence post. Frank then jumps off this building, somehow not dying, and drop kicks his neck on the way down. In this version of the Punisher, Frank has a strong Jason Voorhees vibe. Comic book accurate? Eh, probably not. But it's a fascinating watch. What sets Warzone apart from every other version, including the show, is its tone. Highly divisive for sure, and a good reason many hate it. But is it not enjoyable and almost fitting for such a bizarre film? 
Punisher Warzone feels like the mix between Batman Forever and a late Friday the 13th film. I'm serious. We have the Batman Forever bright neon colored lighting, but with a heavier yellow undertone. It's like Joel Schumacher got together with the DP from Crow City of Angels. We have a choose your victim ending and a villain who's part Two-Face and the Riddler. Take the fun look and goofy humor of Batman Forever. I'll get drive through. Then have Batman blow your f***ing head off. Oh, for fuck's sake. And that's Warzone. Dominic West, or McNulty as he's known around these parts, plays Jigsaw, a mangled mobster whose sole purpose is to kill the Punisher. He'd be the most over-the-top character if his brother, Looney Ben Jim, didn't have him hold his beer and put everyone to shame. It's an arms race to see who can out-Nicholas Cage each other, and I couldn't be happier. I have big issues when it comes to faulty accents. Maybe intentional, but the East Coast mob accent is so cartoonish, it, it has to be satire. If you looked at The Sopranos and saw Gandolfini's layered and subtle performance, but thought, nah, Silvio, He's the real deal. You've got a problem with authority. You'd have McNulty's Billy the Butte. Oh, you're gonna have to explain the wolf fucking Blitzer. Then we have the American detective Paul Budiansky. Colin's American accent is so appalling, I believe it's on purpose. Didn't take you for a religious man, Castle. Between Dominic West and this, I, I see what's going on here. This is it, this is it. This is payback for Dick Van Dyke. And thought up before your very eyes. I'm not saying it's a declaration of war, but it sure is shit an act of aggression. Look at Julie Benz, who is American, has a tough time with her East Coast New York accent as well. Here. What are you doing here? Here. Makes you think you could come here. <sighs> not so much. We can't forget about the parkour. Even by 2008, we were already annoyed. And we have a handful of gratuitous parkour scenes, like the sport invested money in the budget. But we do get this. I can't tell if he's Irish, Jamaican, or a pirate. But turns out, he don't have any anymore. And I don't care. You had me at Rocket Launcher, but you kept me with Punisher, sir. Mr. Punisher, sir. The story is simple. Jigsaw and Looney Bin Jim want to kill the Punisher and will use anyone he cares about as leverage. And that's as deep as it gets. It's not winning any awards or topping any lists. There's nothing wrong with that. It gets characters in familiar situations to get violently killed. It's the film's dueling tones that is both its most interesting part and its biggest flaw. Director Lexi Alexander has stated Marvel was an equal partner, but unfortunately, when there were creative decision conflicts, Marvel would let Lionsgate be the tiebreaker. It's the obvious studio interference which created this loss of identity. Lexi always intended this to be fun and cheesy, but my guess is that since there wasn't a true, well-received Punisher film yet, Lionsgate, and probably Marvel, didn't want to risk making a violent Guardians of the Galaxy. You can see what she was going for, and though Stevenson's brilliant portrayal might seem somewhat out of place, next to wacky Jigsaw giving an amazing and rousing speech on banding together like a bizarro Patton. And we'd like to offer you the opportunity to be all that you can be. I still love them both. A wise man by the name of Robert Palmer once asked, what can you bring me? And the answer, is a little change. And this was the change we needed. It was just a decade too early. Over the top violence, a well executed Punisher, McNulty chewing up the scenery, and mother Newman as Punisher's right hand man, Microchip. It's okay to have fun. And with Warzone, there's fun to be had.